Bears Monday Night Football in Foxborough at Gillette Stadium. That means Bill Belichick and the New England Patriots for week seven. The emphasis is, okay, they're doing some good things. Keep doing those good things, make them better. But the things that need to be worked on are, are kind of obvious. But the good coaching that they're getting and, and the good fundamentals that they have established, that that's, that's the way they're going to trend. Out to his right as they move him, and he hits Mooney. Darnell Mooney, a nice move. continue to be called. Here's one floated for oh. Swift and it's picked! Trigger. Oh, you so the way the center goes, the other linebacker's gonna blitz. He goes left, that guy blitzes. Oh. They got the perfect oh. play. They got a touchdown. Bam! Couldn't have had a better play called there. All out blitz, cover zero, zero people in the middle of the field. They have the wide receiver screen called. It's to the running back. Number seven, he gets out and blocks the safety. You couldn't have a better play called at a better time. what the Patriots expected. Zap, he is brought down. Second down and five, fields to his left. Finds his receiver. Pressure. Fields gets away for the moment. Throws downfield for Komet. Long way to go, but this is a game that these Bears and Matt Eberflus, first year head coach, should be really proud of. Today, we made some moves. Uh, the first one is uh, trading Roquan Smith um, and acquiring a 2023 second round pick, fifth round pick, and AJ Klein. Um, these moves are difficult because they don't, it's just not a move on paper, it, it affects people. I, it was important for Coach and I to spend time with both Roquan uh, as well as many of the leaders on the team uh, to give them our perspective and a little bit of a the why behind it. Um, I felt like we put uh, a lot of effort forward to get that done. And we came up short and we couldn't find common ground. I wanted to definitely, you know, wish him luck moving forward. I know he's going to have a good career. Next move, which was today, was agreeing to terms with the Steelers uh, to acquire Chase Claypool uh, for a 2023 second round pick. Do you guys know what his nickname is? What do you got? 
it's one of the better nicknames in the league. You know, all these lame nicknames like initials and the number TV 12, JF1 are all stupid. His nickname's Mapletron. He's got the measures, uh, measurables of Megatron, but he's from Canada. That is pretty good. I like yeah, that. So I, like, I thought it was important to add another impact player to our offense to go along with the guys that we currently have in the receiver room right now. Big body who's physical, explosive, great leaping ability, can stretch the field, but also is, is violent with the ball in his hand as well as a blocker. Dallas Cowboys next on the agenda for week eight, a good old fashioned noon start after a thrilling win as they take care of business against the New England Patriots. Those legs, we saw a lot of this in Foxborough and down inside the Dallas 40 yard line. The top pass rushers in the NFL. Pressure on fields, using the legs again, and getting a first down again. Moving the football up and down the field. When they got to the tight red zone, they just couldn't get it going. This is the play that got fields a touchdown last week. He Uh, today, um, give credit to the Dallas Cowboys and their coaching staff. Our first year, I think we won. I think we were six and ten. I think we won either six or seven games, but we were highly competitive, right? We lost to Green Bay Packers. You know, we both scored thirty-five plus. They just out. There was just a shootout, but they beat us. We lost. We we were competitive in every game. We we won six of them, but I would say eleven of them we looked like we belonged, right? So, like, that was the first step is be highly competitive, be in every game. Sometimes your youth prevents you from winning all those close games, but be in them. 